If you've been following along with this series, you know that, well, we've talked about two ways of taking ones and zeros, the values that are stored inside memory locations in the computer, and using them to represent integers. So, for example, we might have had 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, I can't actually tell you exactly what that value represents until I tell you what the format is. In other words, uh, defining exactly what those patterns of ones and zeros are meant to represent. For example, we started out our discussion with something called unsigned binary. An unsigned binary assigned a power of two to every one of these positions. I'm not going to write it up on the board right now, but what I would, but but let's go through the process. This was the two to the zero position or one. This was the two to the one position or two. Two to the two or four. 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So this value up here is 64 plus 16, 80, plus 4, 84, plus 2, 86. All right? So <clears throat> that that was a one way and a very, very common way of representing integers using patterns of ones and zeros. But we talked about a second way, and that was packed BCD, packed binary coded decimal. And in that case, what we did was we took our number and divided it up into groups of four bits or nibbles. And the least significant four bits, that was the ones place. So because we look at this, these four bits as an unsigned binary value, this was the one, two, four, eight. So this was six. So we had six decimal ones. And then we took the next nibble. And these four bits also represent one, two, four, eight. And so we have four plus one, that's five. So we have five decimal tens. So this would actually in packed BCD represent 56, all right? Two different integers. Well, we're gonna talk about another possible way to use these values to represent something, well, in the real world this time. Let's look, I'm gonna make a little graph here, and we'll say over time, some sort of value changes. And you in mathematics were probably introduced to the idea of a continuous waveform, right? No breaks between any two points in this waveform. Two actual important things about this. Number one is that it is can, it is made up of an infinitely um, continuous number of points. So if I take any two points on this curve, between those two points, there's an infinite number of points. Cut it in half, still an infinite number of points. The other thing is, is that if I do pick one of these measurements, that particular measurement if I were to measure it with some sort of a device and said, okay, that's equal to 2.8. Is it really equal to 2.8 in the real world? Well, 2.8 may be good enough a measurement, but it's actually got a lot of digits to the right of the decimal point. Those, those digits represent the accuracy. You know, how accurate do we want to make that particular measurement? Well, there's, Two term, two, two measurements, in other words, the number of points, infinite, the accuracy, infinite. Computers don't do infinity real well. In fact, computers can't do infinity. And so we need to figure out a way in order to kind of reduce that resolution down so that it can be stored inside of a machine. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we might be measuring here with this analog signal. For example, the recording that I am making on this microphone is an analog waveform, but whenever it gets stored inside of the machine, it's actually a sequence of points. Almost looks like if you were to take a spreadsheet and look at the list of measurements, that's really what we're looking at is just a list of measurements. And if it's stereo, there'd be two columns in that spreadsheet, one representing the left channel, one representing the right channel. So our measurements are going to be finite resolution and they're not going to be an infinite number of them. Well, how do we do this? Well, we do this with something referred to as an analog to digital 
converter. This is also known as an ADC. Now this ADC, its whole job is to take a voltage level and convert it into a pattern of ones and zeros that represents that voltage level. Now the engineers that have designed the sensor that sends voltage to the ADC, they have some specifications, some, some things that are, are defining how this analog to digital converter is going to take those voltage levels and convert it into <clears throat> a pattern of ones and zeros. One of the things that's really important is we have to define a minimum in other words, we're not going to go any lower than that. Think about an oven. If I've got an oven that's got a digital display on the front, I don't really care if the temperature inside the oven is, say, less than 200 degrees. Really doesn't matter to me. You can't cook anything under 200 degrees. Everything under, like, from 100 to 200 is pretty much just warm, right? <clears throat> and so we don't need to worry about our analog to digital converter and our combined with our sensor to be able to, I don't know, go all the way to absolute zero, right? Negative 273 degrees Celsius. We don't need to go down there. Just for this oven application, 200 degrees is good enough, right? What about the other end of the spectrum? Do I need to, for example, no, be able to measure the temperature on, say, the surface of the sun? Probably not. Whenever it comes to an oven, we need to cap this also at the other end. 500 degrees probably, okay? So what we have done is made it so that our sensor, analog to digital converter, and the machine that's reading these values, we have, have kind of at least chopped off a little bit of infinity, right? We've made it so that <clears throat> by having a minimum and a maximum, I don't have to worry about any temperatures below or any temperatures above. And so what the ADC does, what the analog to digital converter does, is it sends bits back to the computer. And it represents this minimum value with all zeros. And it represents the maximum value with all ones. So even if this signal does go beyond the maximum, the computer is just going to get a value that says, well, we're at the maximum, all ones. Or if the temperature goes way below minimum, you're still going to get from the analog to digital converter just all zeros. Now this brings our second term. Our second term, and, and the, the, so we've got this range, so, so that helps. The second thing that we need to worry about is something referred to as bit depth. Bit depth is the number of bits... And, and this is in, and so this is in our digital value, number of bits in the digital value to represent the measurement. All right. So when the analog to digital converter takes the voltage, <clears throat> converts it into a digital value, it is going to give to the machine a pattern of ones and zeros, but it's going to give a specific number of ones and zeros. Let's go really, really primitive. Let's just say that the bit depth for our analog to digital converter is one bit. All it's going to do is send one bit back to our computer. So that would mean that a zero is representing the minimum and a one is representing the maximum. That really doesn't do much good for us, does it? This is really no longer analog, it's really digital. What the analog to digital converter is going to do is say, okay, if I'm below the halfway point, I'm going to return a zero. If I'm above the halfway point, I'm going to return a one. Our resolution, whenever we get that value, is not going to be very helpful. It's just simply going to say, am I below half or am I above half? Am I in the low half of the range? Am I in the upper half of the range? So what we can do is we can set, I don't know, how about two bits? So there we go. The minimum with two bits is going to be zero, zero the maximum is going to be one, one. And what this gives us then is that 
instead of just having the two levels, we now can have two levels on the inside. We can have 0, 1, and 1, 0. These two values, two internal measurements to our range to give us a little bit better resolution. So if we were to look at this now, what we could say is, okay, if I get a 0, 0, I know that I'm in this range. If I have a 0, 1, I know I'm in this range. If I have a 1, 0, I know I have this range. If I'm a 1, 1, I'm in this range. Gives a little bit better resolution. So how can we get a better resolution than just these? Well, add another bit. Before I go there, though, let's talk about how this range was divided up. So we have the minimum and the maximum, right? Let's go ahead and just talk about our oven. Let's go ahead and say, okay, this was, our minimum is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Our maximum, that was 500 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? That means that our full range is 300 degrees. How many intervals did I divide my range up into using two bits? Well, I divided it up into three segments. The segment from 0, 0 to 0, 1, the segment from 0, 1 to 1, 0, and the segment from 1, 0 to 1, 1, all right? Those three ranges, and by the way, you think, well, with four patterns of ones and zeros, I should be able to divide it up into four ranges. That's not quite true because remember that we have the end point of zero, all zeros representing one end and the end point of all ones representing the other end. That only gives us these two spaces. In other words, counting up from zero, one, two, three, we're dividing it up into three segments. That means that 0, 1 represents what? One third of the way from the full range. So 0, 1 actually represents 300. 1, 0, that's two thirds of the range up from 200. So it's the range is 300. That means each one of these divisions is 100. So we go 200 to 100, I mean, excuse me, 200 to 300, and then 300 to 400, and then 400 to 500. So how do we make our resolution even better? Well, one of the ways we make our resolution even better is to increase the bit depth. By increasing the bit depth, we can get a smaller interval as we jump from pattern of ones and zeros to the next pattern of ones and zeros. So let's say we go to three bits. Still, three bits, all zeros represents our lowest value, all ones represents our highest value, but this time we've got six more elements that are six more patterns of ones and zeros that we can represent or divide our range up into. So by starting at zero, zero, we then go to zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, and one, one, zero, all the way up to one, one, one. Now we have divided our range up into seven segments. So how do we figure out what temperature 0, 1, 1 represents? Well, remember, our segments got smaller. So what we have is a range of 300 degrees. And we divide it by the number of segments. So the number of segments we have here, or the number of intervals is probably a better term, we have seven intervals. Now this term, this, this number seven, is actually pretty easy to come up with. It is simply two to the three minus one. Three being the number of bits that we've got. Minus one, you take away the one for the all zeros being uh, uh, representing the minimum value, okay? How do we get better accuracy? We got better accuracy now. That's what, about 40 degrees? So we got a little bit better accuracy, right? Let's get even better accuracy. In fact, let's just go ahead and instead of counting just with three bits, let's count with eight bits. Well, if we count with eight bits, what we've got is all zeros representing the lowest value, the minimum, eight, <coughs> eight zeros representing the minimum, eight ones representing the maximum. How many intervals is that? Well, 
Eight bits can take on 256 possible patterns of ones and zeros. Take away one of them for the all zeros case, and we have divided our range into 255 different intervals. So we've got 255 intervals now. Well, what is 255? Well, let's see. Uh, if we bring up the calculator here real quick. Uh, two, oops. Clear. So 300 divided by 255, that gives us a resolution of about uh, 1.76 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we'll talk a little bit later in a later episode how we do not want to round, but what I'm trying to show you is, is now, by using 8 bits, what we have done is we have counted up that many intervals and every time we count up an interval we go up about 1.1 1 .1, excuse me 1.176 1 my math is not very good today so 1.176 1 so it's a much smaller range and we could get even better resolution by adding more bits so now let's talk about this guy right here that guy right there remember when we counted in decimal what we did, or excuse me, what we did when we said this is unsigned uh, decimal, we said that this was 64 plus 16, or 80, plus 4, 84, plus 2. This is 86. So now, if we had read this value from our analog to digital converter, instead of it just being an 86, what it would actually represent is 86 intervals up from our minimum. So it would give us a temperature of 200 degrees plus, because remember, we're starting with our base. We're counting up from all zeros being our base, plus 86 intervals. Well, what's our interval? Well, our interval is 300 degrees divided by 255. All right, so we have 300 degrees divided by 255 times 86. It means we are 101.176 degrees above 200. Now, we don't want to do that level of accuracy, but just to give you a general idea, basically what you're saying is that this is about 301 degrees. It's about 301 degrees. And so if we were to read with an analog to digital converter, this value 01010110, and we knew that the engineers had designed it so that 200 degrees was the minimum and 500 degrees was the maximum, we'd know what the oven was actually set at was 301 degrees or what the temperature inside the oven was, was 301 degrees. Now, what we're gonna do in the next episode is actually do some conversions based on a system definition.